we will now discuss purchasing. Purchasing is uh, maintained at only a uh, display level unless you're receiving. But uh, and most people that use plant maintenance module will, won't be doing much receiving. Uh, if receiving is needed, it could be received through SRM or it could be received right here in purchasing itself. So if we look at the diagram here, purchasing, it's a little complex. Uh, there's two ways that you could create a purchase order. So purchase order is uh, the main outcome of, uh, of purchasing. One is through a purchase rec, and the other, which leads to SoCo, and then goes to a purchase order, and the other one's through Easy Buy. Now, POs, purchase orders, are created only in SRM, and it's outside of ECC and outside of this video. All we could discuss is what's going on with the purchase orders once they're created or what leads to them being created. So purchase recs are created from within ECC. So a purchase rec could be created from MRP which has a demand for a part that is now short. It could also be created from a work order. It also could be created manually as overhead. When a purchase requisition is created, it goes to SoCo, sourcing cockpit in SRM, and then from there the users could create purchase orders. This will then go to the vendor, and then once it arrives, the goods are received. And then once the goods are received, <coughs> the user it could be received either to inventory, to the work order, or to be uh, received to the cost center, which is overhead. Now, um, in this video, we'll demonstrate all, all the scenarios here, creating a PREC through work order, inventory, uh, or MRP, and then manually. And then we're going to display a list of purchase recs. We will not display SRN, which is sourcing cockpit, but we will we'll display the purchase orders that are created via SoCo and Easy Buy. And then we'll receive the purchase orders and see the effect it has on inventory, on the work order. So let's begin. So in purchasing, you only have access to view the purchase rec with ME5A and view the purchase orders with ME2N. And then if needed, you could do a service entry sheet. This could also be done in SRM. So it's up to you where you want to do it. So the first thing we'll do is uh, examine, examine our inventory. So we'll start off by looking at our inventory. Currently, there's no stock for any of the parts. These right here are MRP run, and these are not MRP run. So none of these parts are in stock. Furthermore, if we look at purchasing, we look at our purchase recs. There's no purchase requisitions. So we're going to do three things. We're going to create purchase recs from MRP, purchase recs from work order, and then a manual purchase rec. And we will see the differences between all three of them. First thing to do is that we have to go to inventory and run MRP. So we'll run MRP for the whole plant. 2507. And this says the seven purchase requisitions are created. If we go back to MD04, this is all inventory, so it's not part of purchasing. We will see that anything has a V1 has a purchase rec now. If it has a V1, as a purchase rec now. 
if it does not have a V1, like this one right here, ND does not have a purchase rec. Now, we're going to go look at our purchase requisitions. So we put an ALV here, your plant, check these two off, and then you press execute. Here's all the purchase requisitions we've created. If it says created by maintenance, that means it was an NRP item. Then it tells you the total value and the quantity it wants to order and the delivery date that we should have it for. You could go into the purchase rec and look at it. You could also make changes and you could delete the purchase rec. In this case, we're going to delete this one. Save. So now we have looked at this. Now we're going to go create some purchase recs from a work order. We should look at our list of parts. We should pick the ones that are ND. So in this case, I'll select this part here, ND, and put it against a work order. We now we go to components and we press the part number where it says IC, you should put N and the quantity, how many you need. Enter. That is all you need to do. You press release and a purchase requisition will be created. Yes. We press save. We will now go back to our list of purchase requisitions. We will now see this part here. This comes from the work order because it says F. If it says F, it means it comes from a work order. If we were to look at this purchase rec, we would see it comes from this order here. You can look at the work order and look at the components ordered. Now we're going to go, and it shows the person that created this TAP EVO. Now we're going to go create a manual PREC. We will create a manual PREC for a part that we don't have in stock, like this one here. To verify, there's no PREC right now. I want to show that 407 now has. 407 now has a PREC, we press refresh, there it is, there's a work order and a PREC, it's direct procurement. So, ME51N. So the first thing to do is to put the material number. Afterwards, we got to assign the category, which in this case will be to the cost center since it's overhead. So cost center. We'll pick the quantity, which is one. Put the delivery date, which should be next week. Material group, we'll say is <laughs> And 
purchasing group. We'll see the cost center is 2507-4340. Validation price we'll say is $100. Yes, it could be met. So, we have created this purchase rec. We will now go back to a list of purchase recs and look at them. We will now see that this one says a K, which means is a manual P rec. It's not against a work order. So, now that we've created all these purchase recs, <clears throat> We should see them turn into <coughs> work orders. I mean, uh, purchase orders.